Is it possible to gain 20 pounds of muscle while still staying lean in 90 days naturally? Well, that depends on how you define natural, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to decide for yourself. I did genuinely gain 20 pounds of muscle over the last 90 days without touching a single performance-enhancing drug, a SARM, or natty roids like Turkesterone. But I also can't truly claim natty. If that doesn't make any sense yet, and you clicked on this video because of the cheeky little semi in the title, Hold on to your butts. Because in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how I did it. And most importantly, I'm gonna talk about the message that I wanna to spread to the fitness community as a whole. But in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to tell you a story first. I started lifting weights with my dad when I was 15 years old on the weekends. I was a lean, mean fighting machine of a sopping wet 145 pounds. And at this point in my life, the only physical activity I was really getting was lifting the Baconator and the large Dr. Pepper up to my mouth while I was sitting in the lobby in COD, Halo Reach, or League of Legends. My dad, on the other hand, has been ridiculous strong for my entire life. When he was in his 20s, the people at his office actually had a cardboard cutout made of his head pasted onto Superman's body. So you can put at least one point on the board for genetics. And I'll say this much too, when you're a teenager first getting into lifting and you desperately want your father's approval and said father can still bench 315 for reps, it'll light a fire under your ass. For all my dads out there watching this, get strong and stay strong. I promise you it will make a difference to your son someday. Those weekend training sessions quickly morphed into getting my first copy of Body for Life, which that quickly changed into spelunking on every bodybuilding.com forum that I could find. And it wasn't long until I saw pumping iron for the first time. And by then, the gym was my entire life. I loved it and everything changed when I saw a real bodybuilder in person for the first time. I will never forget it. He was a senior who had been held back a year when I was a freshman in high school. And hindsight being what it is, he was already juiced to the gills. I would watch in absolute awe as he would deadlift 315 for sets of 20 and then leave the gym to tweet about how he had puked up his breakfast and was on his way to go eat another meal to make up for it. He always trained in an oversized yellow animal t-shirt and it became my goal in life to fill one of those out someday. By the time I was in college, I had dreams of competing and becoming pro someday. No matter how hungover I was from the most recent frat party, I always made it to the gym. My training and diet were all over the place. I mostly just followed whatever the latest Mike Rashid, CT Fletcher, Insanity had dropped was, or a pretty generic bro split from bodybuilding.com. I spent what little money I had on supplements. I dropped out of college first semester of sophomore year and that's when things really started escalating. I competed in my first show in 2015 when I was 20 years old and I was 100% natural. And at the time I didn't realize what a disadvantage this would be in the NPC. Still, I worked really hard and I walked away with a respectable third and fourth place. My next show was my first time going to the dark side, which for the record, should be the only proof you ever need that almost every single fitness influencer you follow is not lifetime natural because this is what I looked like. And a lot of these guys walk around all year long, way more shredded and way bigger. I digress. I ended up winning my class at this show, beating out celebrity trainer Chris Powell. The show after this was an absolute dumpster fire for a whole bunch of reasons, mainly because my hormones were all over the place and I ended up getting fifth. But right after this, they announced the classic physique division. This was what I had always wanted and I worked my ass off. I handily won the overall with a level of conditioning that if I do say so myself, you almost never see at the amateur level and my future in bodybuilding looked really bright. Then during my off-season bulk for a run at my pro card, I almost died. Now I've told the rest of the story on the channel a whole bunch of times, so I'll direct you to one of my other videos for that. But as a very quick TLDR, I spent the next several years floundering, having no idea what I would do without bodybuilding. I eventually came off of all PEDs, including my TRT, and spent the next three years intentionally losing as much of my size as I possibly could and focused purely on my health. I got super into jujitsu and running and I went from my top weight of 235 pounds when I was bulking all the way down to 170 pounds, which I hadn't seen since high school. At the end of that time, I was for all intents and purposes back at my natural starting point, which is what day one of this video's thumbnail looked like. And come about April of this year, I felt extremely small and frail. I decided it was time to finally face my fears and get back in the gym. Now for the first two and a half months, I followed a slightly modified version of Jeff Nippard's Pure Bodybuilding 2.0, which is 
truly fantastic. And for anyone out there who says Jeff's programs are bunk or he just copy and paste stuff, they fundamentally don't understand what a good training program should look like. It should look all but identical week over week, month over month. If your goals are hypertrophy and strength and your exercises, target rep range and number of sets is changing every week, you're doing it wrong, period. My modifications to the program were as follows. I trained Monday through Friday doing a pull, push, legs, pull, push. I would very occasionally throw in the extra arms and weak point training session on Sundays. And I only did one leg day a week because my legs, particularly my glutes, are hyper responsive to training. And I wasn't ready to be the meme guy from that video getting carried out on the stretcher just yet. As I would recommend for anyone getting back into the gym, I actually started really small. I dramatically lowered my weights and my RPE. I did this for the first two or three weeks to give myself time to ramp up to training again. Now during this time, I also did jujitsu three to five times a week for one to two hours at a time. And that is absolutely overtraining for 99.99% of humanity. And I'll be the first one to admit that. It's not a level of training I can recommend to anyone watching this video, nor is it realistic for a lot of folks watching this just given scheduling. My diet during the first 75 days or so of this was something that I frankly paid almost no attention to. I'm sure that's going to infuriate a lot of people, but it is what it is. I did aim to increase my protein intake as much as possible because up to this point I was maybe hitting 100 grams a day and most of my calories was coming from smashing entire bars of chocolate, which I wouldn't recommend either. I just use general heuristics for nutrition portion sizes that had become really ingrained in me over the years of competing, coaching other people, and just learning how my body works. I knew that my caloric expenditure from lifting and doing jiu-jitsu almost every day was so large and my starting point was so lean that it really didn't matter what I ate as long as I ate enough. Now with this approach in the first 75 days or so, I managed to put on about 12 pounds of muscle and I was having the most fun in the gym I had had in years. Now around day 75 or so, Jeff Nipper had released his steroids are awesome video. Because I had become so disconnected from the bodybuilding world for so long, I had no idea how bad the steroid epidemic had become. I fell down a rabbit hole of watching hours of content from my favorite creators trying to get a grasp on what was happening. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing, from 14 year olds taking Tran on TikTok for a challenge, to Togi talking about toasting his liver with super droll and drinking as if it were a point of pride to the trend twins being well the trend twins it's all truly appalling behavior and i was really deeply concerned which is when i realized that i have a story and a message worth sharing and i started taking this much more seriously also that i could prove to some of the folks who've become enhanced that it's not too late you can get off the sauce, prioritize your health, and still make incredible progress. I tested out my old logbook and switched over to my favorite style of training, which is a really low volume, very high intensity style, kind of old school thing. I stopped going to jiu-jitsu so that I could prioritize my recovery and my weight training, and I started taking my nutrition much more seriously and started tracking to try and get to about 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day. I'm 15 days into this renewed intensity and at this point, I've gained an additional seven and a half pounds since really doubling down, which puts me in the mid 190s. Again, I haven't touched a PED, a SARM, something like Terkestrone this entire time. And it's been more than three years since the last time I did. And I'm most likely extremely hypogonadal after years of steroids and TRT, although the blood work is still to come. All that said, I am well aware that these are not standard 90 day results. So what gives? Well, it's, it's actually kind of hard to say for sure. What we do know from rodent models is that even short-term exposure to anabolic steroids can have potentially profound long-term effects, even after coming off. Now, this is likely due to a combination of different factors, such as muscle memory, an increased number of myonuclei, and an overall increased number of muscle fibers that can result from intense training and anabolic exposure. The way that I like to think of this is, if you ever expose yourself to anabolic steroids, you're basically taking whatever your original natural cap was and shifting it. Now, how far it shifts and how much of that shift you can maintain after taking anabolics out of the equation is gonna vary dramatically from individual to individual, cycle to cycle, etc. It's also gonna depend how much of that sticks around if and when you decide to get off of gear for good. But some amount of that shift, in my opinion, will always remain. That combined with my genetics, which I'll be the first to admit are extraordinarily rare, my starting point for this particular run being so lean, and my 15 years of training history allowed me to go further and faster than the average person might otherwise have been able to. I wanna take a moment to reiterate my core message here. To those who have chosen to get on anabolics, it's not too late to get off the sauce, prioritize your health, 
and still be able to make really great progress. And for those who haven't made the leap yet and are starting to maybe consider it because of the steroid epidemic being what it is, there are long and short-term side effects of steroids that I promise you can't possibly comprehend until you've been exposed to them. For the vast majority of human beings in the vast majority of circumstances, the dark side is not worth it. So what do you guys think of this? Is this an impressive amount of muscle and transformation for 90 days? Can I claim natty? Is semi-natural a good term for what it is that I am? What else do you want to hear me talk about in regards to this particular topic? And do you, like me, think that this message is an important one to share with the fitness community at large? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, the single best thing you can do is hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another update from me. And if you'd like to have some credit for my future endeavors and provide a little bit more behind the scenes support, you can consider donating to my Patreon. The link's in the description. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. It means the world. And with that, till next time, folks.